This video introduces the basic knowledge of frequency response of common emitter amplifier circuit, including frequency response calculation method and measurement method. The frequency response of an amplifier circuit, which describes how the output gain changes in response to a change in the frequency of the input signal. It is usually represented by a graph. The bandwidth of the amplifier circuit can determine the effective frequency range of the amplifier circuit. On the chart, we can see several key parameters. The upper cutoff frequency and lower cutoff frequency determine the bandwidth of the amplifier circuit. This leads us to the formula for bandwidth. After understanding the concept of bandwidth, let's look at the common emitter amplifier circuit. From the schematic, we can see that R1 and R2 form a resistor partial voltage network for setting the bias voltage of the triode. The triode can be kept on at all times. R5 is a negative feedback resistor used to set a certain static magnification. And the amplifier of the circuit is independent of the triode used. The magnification does not vary depending on the type of transistor. The bypass capacitor CE1 is used to short-circuit the AC signal to the ground to improve the amplification of the AC signal. When we plug in an AC signal, CE1 bypasses the negative feedback resistor R5, slightly different from a typical common emitter amplifier circuit, and our output capacitor TTO is grounded. This is in order to form a low-pass filter circuit with RC to limit the high-frequency signal, we understand the static parameters of the circuit. The current of the collector can be deduced by knowing the voltage of the base, emitter, and collector. Through the calculation of the above formula, we can calculate the cutoff frequency of the upper and lower limits. Next, we verify our calculation results by actual measurement. The input signal is a sine wave signal of 2000 Hz with a peak-to-peak -peak value of 20 mV. It can be seen that the peak value of the output signal is 1.18 volts, which is 94 times amplified, and there is a certain deviation from the calculated result. In channel 1, we access the input signal, and in channel 2, we access an output signal through an amplified circuit. When we measure the upper end frequency, that is, we start at 2000 Hz and continuously increase the frequency of our input signal. Until the peak value of our output signal decays to 0.707 times its original value. That's 0.834 volts. This frequency is the upper cutoff frequency. The actual measured cutoff frequency differs from our calculated 48.2 kHz to some extent. Measuring the lower cutoff frequency means continuously reducing the frequency of the input signal starting from 2000 Hz. Until the peak-to-peak -peak value of the output signal drops to 0.707 times the original peak-to-peak -peak value, it can be seen that the cutoff frequency for the descent is approximately 47 Hz, which is slightly different from the 41 Hz we calculated. 